in a warehouse back here, sir. You're in a parts store in the back of your Prius? <laughs> you remember this guy, the corroded block we found when we disassembled the tie rod rigging below deck. You'll be happy to know we had new blocks made that almost fit. <laughs> Follow along as we re-engineer new tie rod blocks, get bottom paint everywhere, even our sleeves and socks, and finally decide to end our mass step we pull woes with a magic box. <laughs> Recall we had two very big issues with our new tie rods the minute they came out of the box. It is bent. One, they were bent. And it doesn't and two the heads wouldn't fit in the blocks. Did we send in the old or just tell him? No, I guess we didn't because we're holding on to them. Well, maybe Van can cut that. Maybe that can be modified. No, uh, this is a cold-headed... This is not something machinists can do. Damn it. Can we do any sort of flat plate in there or something? No. No, it needs to be like that. So go what was he provided to know how to do this right? Send him a picture of the head. Yeah. Ah. It is bent, too. I mean, hold it up. That's just... Like you can tell. I can see the bend in it right here. I'm sorry, honey. Get him on the phone. Because we can't use that. Right, can you hold it? Turns out we could. But a couple of lessons to learn here. All lessons are free today. First, the tie rods did have a bend in them. But we had to remember it was rod rigging, which comes in huge spools, much like wire rigging. So the coiling does cause some bend in the rigging, but it's flexible, so that's okay. Second, the head wasn't made incorrectly. It's just, this is the new way cold fused heads are made. It's different than it was 30 years ago, so they have a new shape. But it did mean they did not fit into our blocks. But we had an idea. Maybe the plate the box can be modified very easily. Well, we're gonna have to have a block made, so I know that they can shave it, you know, just mm -hmm. slightly. And so began our love-hate relationship with the machining aspect of this refit. While we were lucky to find a local machinist who was talented and quick to get parts back to us, the machining on this project was far more than we would have ever imagined. It seemed there was always a part that didn't fit quite right or needed to be threaded further up or something. The below the deck rigging on this refit was far more difficult than all 50 feet of the wire above. But the good news, there was this super cute puppy that greeted you every time you went to the machine shop. Me, Tucker. Well, welcome to me at the machine shop. Little puppy says, hello, hello. So cute. He just <laughs> opened my door. Said hello. <laughs> so I'm bringing this stuff and money to the machine guy. Let's go see him. I don't know where he's at. Show me where he's at. Where do I go? Where do I go? Show me. That puppy made every trip worth it. <laughs> but even when we had new parts made, some of the obstacles we ran into were almost laughable. We got our tie rods today. We're going to try to fit them in. They just got threaded. And we're hoping everything works well. I'm a little worried about this here. The depth of this hole here and that our socket may not fit around our nut in there. So one concern. We're going to go check that out this morning. No, I remember it being three quarters. Huh. Three quarters ain't gonna fit in there, so we got some problems there. Yeah, let's see what you're working with. Uh, Dag nabbit! Mm -hmm. There's an issue. So our socket won't fit around our nut down in the middle of the backing plate. Can't really tighten without a socket. <laughs> Why do you not always think of this crap that'll hold you up? 
Rigging is hard. <laughs> Rigging is hard. To be honest, I felt far more productive doing the bottom job. So that's what I did. Once I started sanding, I kind of wished I hadn't chipped so many areas out. But I really feel it just had to be done. That's the chippage in the paint. It's a real technical term. Yes. I mean, I'm, I'm like dusting like that, like nothing. So if it comes off, we need to get it down. This little pocket, though, I mean, it's not everywhere. But I'm gonna have to sand them by hand, like that one, trying to get it smooth. But we'll do these as we do this guy, and it makes sense, right? Yeah, oh yeah, we want to have a good bottom job. So, that's what, what I'm up to. Great. Well, that's excellent. <laughs> it was definitely a day's chore, and while I think I ended up with more bottom paint on me than was left on the boat, I was definitely glad to be done. I mean, goddamn, that ain't a chore. But at least I thought I was done. Do you remember that meltdown I mentioned when I was doing so the kill scene? Though, it looks pretty darn good, I think. No, it doesn't. It was close, but there were, like I said, some edges and some tiny little cracks where water could get in. So I had to refloat it a third time. <laughs> and I had a little bit of a meltdown about it. Thankfully, we didn't catch it on camera. So all's well. Keel seam, done. So here's what happened. We rinsed the boat down after the big sand job. Annie went home for a rinse down as well and came back wet head and all for more fun at the shipyard only to find a fresh swipe of epoxy dried on my kill seam and the news that I was going to have to refloat the entire seam and sand the bottom again. I was not happy. Man, and you got yourself a box of fun there. Box of goodness, Pandora's box. Yeah, you've been having a big day of it. Big day, sand and bottom. He didn't like that. Here's our little chart. Oh, I didn't mind that. I didn't like the redo. Uh, bridge we did. And notice how friendly Philip is in this clip. I think he's scared of me. Okay. Well, I will go get my drill. Well, we have this great thing called a caliper. And this great thing called an unhappy Annie but there's not really time for pouting at the shipyard, so I just had to get over it. What we did have was this Pandora's box. Let me show you what we were working with here. If you recall, the whole reason for our rotten stringers was a clogged weep hole in our mast step. Stringers, what we found only after we pulled the mast is there is a weep hole. Um, and so water theoretically should drain out of the weep hole down into the bilge. But let's look back again at that initial footage. What do you see there? And we got a new kind of gravy, says Brent. <laughs> new kind of gravy? Well, not quite gravy, but worse. But ours was clogged. <laughs> Just the like tiniest little sliver of mud right in there clogged the hole and the whole thing held water. So we devised a solution. Hey guys, this is our um, mat step. Awesome. We've got a um, pipe reading thingy that uh, we had threaded tapped in and glued on, so that'll be our nice drain hole. And That's right. We enlarged the weep hole, as many of you had recommended, and tapped in a pipe to attach a hose so we could capture the water in the mast. This was another brilliant branding idea. Drain. Yeah. Like, you think we can thread? So now we have a mass step with a pipe embedded that we can affix a hose and capture the water. Now, where will we direct the water to? Stay tuned for the installation of our new sump box, where we capture water from the fridge, shower, mast, and anchor locker. There'll be no more wet bilge on this boat. All right, sump box in place. My pet project, no water in the bilge. Like in the videos? Awesome! Go to havewindwilltravel.com where you can follow on the blog, check out my books on Amazon, 
or help us give the gift of cruising on Patreon. Get inspired and get on board. I'm trying to keep my little camera safe. All right, let's see what we got in here. Tyros. Moon stuffing. That's what it is. Ooh. Those are pretty. Let's make sure they fit in our box. <laughs> yeah, that's what we want. The heads look different to me. Yeah, they're slightly different. You know, but, uh, it's just slightly more. Maybe the plates of the box can be modified very easily. Well, we're going to have to have a block made, so I know that they can shave it, you know, just mm -hmm. slightly. Okay. So I think that'll work. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's an easy fix. Yeah, just step back in a minute. Yeah, one straight one's curved. God, Cammy. Hey, and you got yourself a box of fun there. Box of goodness. Pandora's box. Yeah. You've been having a big day of it. Big day. I do me a babble of time and I guess I never will. Alright. That box. In place.